founder of Girl Geek X. And I'm really excited to introduce our speaker. San Robinson is a mobile UI engineer at CrowdStrike, where she's responsible for develop developing user-friendly, intuitive, and responsible applications using Ember. She uses technology to advance education, environmental sustainability, and social good through unique and complex approaches. So we're really excited to hear her talk on ARVR and her passion project. Welcome, San. Thank you, Angie, for the great introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is San. I'm a software engineer and a freelance technology consultant. I have a deep interest in the confluence of education and travel. With this vision, over the past six years, I've researched and began developing ARVR technology solutions like the Natives POV, where my mission is to cultivate language learning, cultural understanding, and global citizenship, citizenship using immersive technologies and gamification. Today, I am dedicated to revolutionizing language learning utilizing AR VR to create immersive experiences for people around the globe and to inspire and educate people like you so that they too can create world-changing AR VR apps. Have you ever been lost in an algorithm? Like Alice tumbling down a virtual rabbit hole. One minute you're scrolling through cat photos and the next thing you know, you've turned into an overnight expert on diabetic cat care. And yes, that's a thing. From there, you zapped off into a whirlwind tour of app building. And before you can say hello world, you've teleported into a bustling Korean marketplace. All of this without moving an inch from your couch. Information overload. But without getting into the negatives that rhyme with my phone, let's talk about AR VR for immersive learning. A new level unlocked. We're stepping into the realm of augmented, reality, augmented and virtual reality for learning. It is like switching from a black and white TV to color. Only this time you don't watch it, you live it a world where anything is possible. That is the power of AR, VR. Now that we've opened Pandora's box of immersive tech, AR, VR, XR, what is the difference between these things? Let's start with VR. With VR, we step into a completely immersive and digital environment. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live inside of a volcano or what it would be like to hang out with your favorite music artists? When you wear a VR headset, you're transported into a different world. A user could be in a conference room in New York and instantaneously get transported into a virtual beach in Hawaii. Or imagine you're a language learner looking to build your vocabulary, but everything around you is in the language that you know. What if you can alter and enhance your world using just your phone? This is what augmented reality is, a place where our existing world and our virtual world merges. Think of Pokemon Go. Now let's say you have an important event that you're trying to figure out what to wear. You may just have to go to the store and try on new outfits, which can sometimes be a drag, especially when time doesn't permit. Your other option is online shopping and waiting a few days with the possibility of you not liking it. With mixed reality, you can try on new things before you get it. And if you don't like the look, you can just change it with the click of a button. So AR, VR, XR, but what is, what is XR? It's extended reality. It's the umbrella term for AR, MR, and VR. It's considered immersive technologies. You may be wondering with all this talk of AR and VR and tech advancements, how does this fit into your personal life? It could seem overwhelming or perhaps even disconnecting you from the real world, but that's where immersive technologies like AR and VR come into play. It's the power to travel without moving, to immerse without diving, and to learn in ways that we never thought were possible. I'd like to take you on a personal journey of mine, of immersive experiences. In 2017, I spent a year in Guangzhou, China. I experienced the intricate dance of language learning, the nuances of culture, and the subtle art of living like a local. In just one year, I acquired more Mandarin skills than I've acquired in four years of high school Spanish. But let's be realistic. It's not feasible for everyone to pack their bags and immerse, this, immerse themselves in a foreign country to learn something new. And that's where technology steps in. Using immersive technologies, we can replicate the essence of being in a completely different environment and foster learning through virtual immersion. Picture this, you're living in, in China and you're learning Mandarin from the comfort of your home, but it feels like you're right in the heart of Beijing, surrounded by native speakers and vibrant local life. Or let's say you've been intrigued by uh, Chinese architecture with VR. You could transfer into a different world you can be in the Forbidden City experiencing the majestic history as if you were physically there. And that's where the native POV comes in. 
learning through a Native perspective from anywhere. While I too am a fan of the real world, I cannot overlook the immense potential of these technologies and bringing the world closer and truly making learning limitless. So while this might all seem groundbreaking, astonishing even, it's relevant to each one of us as we strive to learn and grow in this interconnected world. Through my research, I learned something really interesting. The human brain processes visuals 60,000 times faster than text, and 90% of the information transferred to the brain happens to be visual. So what does this mean for learning? Let's take a moment to consider the learning pyramid, a visual representation of how different learning methods impact our knowledge retention. At the apex, we have passive learning techniques like lectures and reading, which results in just five to 10% retention. But as we move downwards, we find more interactive methods such as dis group discussions, practicing, yielding higher retention rates in about 50 to 75%. And at the bottom of the, of the pyramid, we find the most effective learning method, teaching others or immediate use of learning, which has an impressive 90% retention rate. It's clear to see that as we descend the pyramid, learning becomes more interactive and more engaging, thus more effective. This is exactly where immersive technologies like AR and VR come into play, taking us straight to the bottom of the pyramid, enhancing retention, and making learning deeply engaging. Now shifting our focus to communication, an essential part of learning and sharing knowledge. The famed research by Albert Meharivan breaks it down into three components, 55% nonverbal, like facial expressions and body language, 38% vocal, the tone and picture of our speech, and only a mere 7% of actual words used helps us communicate each day. Imagine then the power of the immersive technologies that allows us to practice and learn environments where all these aspects can be incorporated. In a virtual world, a learner isn't just reading words or hearing a lecture, they are in the midst of action, practicing and learning nonverbal cues, picking up tones and picture of the pictures of the language, and actively using their learning. This depiction of the learning pyramid and our understanding of communication is what makes AR and VR the next frontier of education and training. Now that we see that leveraging immersive technologies can help with both communication and learning, what does that mean for cross-culture communication? That means consider, consider a scenario when you're an American executive preparing for a crucial business meeting in Japan. With the aid of AR and VR, you can find yourself in a virtual environment, mimicking a Japanese office, helping you experience the perfect bow or learning the proper way of exchanging business cards. These immersive technologies by creating realistic simulations of different culture equips us with the knowledge and exposure that might otherwise require physical travel and a significant time investment. In essence, this allows us to explore and understand the riches and diversity of our global community fostering empathy and refining our communication skills. In 2019, the University of California began studying augmented reality. They used it to visualize scientific data via 3D models and videos to provide insight into human biology in an app called Scholar. This, the results are amazing. 90% of students using AR, VR, felt more engaged, 85% of them understood the subject more, and there was a 10% average in grade, grade increase. Students really enjoyed the app and they said that it made learning more fun and much more easier to understand. Today, technology has changed a lot and these AR, VR technologies are becoming increasingly sophisticated and are being used in various ways, from gaming and entertainment to education and training one example of AR technology that we may all know of is Pokemon Go. This game allowed players to use their smartphones to see and interact with Pokemon in the real world. Another example is Snapchat's AR lenses, and these lenses allowed users to gain a digital filter and effects on their photos. While VR technologies are becoming increasingly popular, one example of VR technology is the Oculus Rift. This headset allows users to immerse themselves in virtual worlds. And another example is the HTC Vive. This headset allows users to interact with virtual objects using just their hands. Um, one of my favorites is Google Expedition. 
which allows users to actually learn about different things in different countries and different uh, places using just AR and VR. But we should take a moment to really consider the backstage heroes and the cutting of the cutting edge immersive technologies, the people who are powering the development of AR and VR. Places like the Morocco software platforms such as Unity and Umbrella Engine, which serves as canvases where creators can design immersive experiences. Unity has a user-friendly interface that is widely recognized for their AR and VR developments, helping creators animate and stimulate lifelike environments. On the other hand, Unreal, particularly with its MetaHumans app, is known for its robust graphics and cutting edge technology. The MetaHuman app, which happens to be my personal favorite, brings photorealistic visuals to the VR world, enabling the creation of astonishingly realistic human characters. It truly showcases the power and potential potential of Unreal engines and shaping the future of digital experiences, especially when it comes to acquiring a new language. Then we have the hardware, like the magic wands that bring our interactions to life, like Oculus Rift, PlayStation VR, and new, Apple's new Apple Vision Pro glasses that are overlaying digital information in our physical world. But it's not just about the hardware and software. AR and VR rely heavily on advancements in computer vision and AI. These technologies allow systems to understand and respond to what they're seeing, making our interactions in the virtual world more intuitive and seamless. The confluence of these technologies is accelerating growth and adoption of immersive technologies, opening up limitless, limitless possibilities in our journey towards a more immersive and interactive future. And as we step closer, uh, as we step further into this exciting and transformative era, it becomes increasingly important for us to understand the specific advantages and obstacles associated with these innovative developments. Let's turn our attention now to the benefits and challenges that AR and VR, a key player in immersive technology landscape, and imagine how it reshaping the future using virtual reality while simultaneously presenting new hurdles and that we must overcome as time goes on. Some of the benefits in the realm of AR, VR, what's striking to me was the increase in motivation and engagement. The immersive nature of these technologies draws users in, keeping them engaged for longer and driving a curiosity to explore and learn. It turns learning from, from a task to an adventure. These technologies also shine in simplifying uh, complex concepts, visual, visualizing abstract ideas and intricate processes, which, is, which are often a challenge for many people. AR, VR brings these concepts to life by making them more comprehensible and relatable. For instance, learning about the structure of atoms comes exponentially easier when you can explore it in the digital realm. AR's, VR's impact on retention and recall is also profound. The interactive experimental learning that these technologies provide aids in memory retention. It's one thing to read about the pyramids of Giza, and there's another one to actually virtually explore them. By placing these learners in the real world of fantastical scenarios, AR, VR fosters problem solving and critical thinking skills. Users can learn and navigate and adapt to and make real decisions based off of these environments, which actually helps them develop a more cognitive experience. And lastly, these technologies have the ability to ignite and spark learning. The assignment of exploring a virtual world or interacting with AR applications can turn the most reluctant learners into eager explorers. But in a nutshell, AR VR not only enhances the way we learn, but it also instills a love for learning which to me is arguably the greatest gift and benefit. Now let's move into the challenges. Well, some insights. ARVR has actually shown that 20% um, of increase in learning outcomes. Another thing is that 50% of education and institution plan to implement ARVR in the next five years. So the insights are there and we can see that ARVR has many benefits, but we should also focus on the challenges because with every silver lining, there is some clouds. ARVR is no exception. The first challenge we encounter is training. And the second 
uh, problem we encounter is limited availability. But the, the really big challenge that I foresee in, in the future is the high cost of this hardware, which can be prohibited to widespread adoption. Efforts to create ongoing affordable devices are, you, are being completed to bridge this gap. Now there's also the user experience, which strides have been made to creating intuitive and user-friendly interfaces. It is also a significant cha challenge. Navigating the virtual world should be as easy as it is to navigate the physical one. There's also a question about the accessibility of and the digital divide that AR VR might cause. But as we embrace these technologies, we have to ensure that they are accessible to all, regardless of social economic status or geographical location. And lastly, there are ethical and safety considerations. Balancing immersive experiences with user safety and privacy is paramount. As we venture deeper into these virtual worlds, defining rules for data for protection, user interactions, and content moderation will be crucial. The journey towards perfect AR VR is always challenging, but as we navigate these obstacles, the horizon holds a promising and immersive future. In the realm of education and learning, these technologies are revolutionizing the way we absorb and retain knowledge. They will create a more immersive experimental learning environments where students can explore the world, conduct complex lab experiments, or engage with Shakespeare's plays in ways that we've never seen possible. All this in the comfort of their classroom or home. But this potential extends far beyond just education. For example, in healthcare, immersive technologies a practitioner can stimulate experiences of patients from different racial, ethnic, gender, and socioeconomic backgrounds, or those with specific conditions such as autism, PTSD, and also physical disabilities. This immersive experience can deepen the understanding of how these patients perceive and interact with the world, leading to more empathetic and personalized care. In the business world, AR can exist, assist in product design or provide employees with hands-on training. And let's not forget about the entertainment industry, where technologies will continue to redefine our gaming movie and live events experiences, making more interactive and more and making them more interactive and more immersive. But as we stand at the this technological crossroad, the possibility seems endless. Challenges remain, such as reducing costs and refining user interfaces, but the trajectory of AR is really clear. AR is set to become integral parts of our life, tools that will transform how we work, play, and learn. Now that we have explored the potential applications of AR and VR across various domains, I hope you gain a better understanding of how these technologies can make a significant impact. We are truly standing on the threshold of a new era. I would like to thank you all for your attention and participation at this time. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have and leave the floor open for discussions. Thank you. Thank you, San. That was an excellent talk on AR VR. Really excited to have you sharing your knowledge. I'm gonna have to wrap up the session and hop to the next one, but thank you for joining us. And there's a lot of chatter in the chat, so I encourage you to check it out and connect with people. Um, you can message them on this platform if you like, but I'm gonna be hopping to the next session. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Angie.